So uh, keep things moving along here. Um, you know, WebRTC, um, like most technologies, is built on other technologies, and one of those core technologies is Codex. And Vince here is to, uh, here to talk about the latest codec for uh, both broadcast and real-time communications um, called BP9. So we'll let Vince, developer advocate at Dialogic, take it away. Thanks, Chad. You can also use the stage mic. Appreciate that. So as Chad said, I'm here to talk a little bit about VP9. And, and Chad actually reached out to me about a month ago, uh, right around the time when VP9 made its way in mainstream into the Chrome GA. So he had asked if I'd be willing to come up here and speak a little bit about uh, my experiences with testing VP9 and, and what I've been going through as far as uh, you know trial and tribulations of, of what it's like to be working with VP9. So just to take a few minutes about talking uh, about it a little bit, uh, going to take you through how I tested it some of the experiences I had with it, and maybe some surprises that I had along the way. So before I, I actually get into things, um, just, just a show of hands, how many of you have heard of VP9 or are interested in VP9 and, and actually care about it? Very good. OK. So, so VP9, uh, this is a, a PSA that was put out back in, in uh, December. And I, I call it a new codec, but actually VP9 has been used uh, for many, many years, a couple years now in, with uh, YouTube. Uh, it's been in the beta channel for Chrome Canary for a while now, but it actually just went uh, GA in the, in the Chrome M48 uh, back, I believe, about a month ago. So uh, back in December, it was, it was actually announced that it will actually go into the main line, and then actually a month later, it actually released into the main line. So what, what differentiates this from yet another codec? And so VP9, is, it's made its, pretty much it's made its way as a, a pretty intelligent codec, but What's differentiating this from, I guess, VP8 and all the others is, is the statement there saying that at 40% lower bit rate compared to VP8 and H.264, you get the same quality. And that's a pretty bold statement as far as uh, being able to, to uh, offer the same amount of quality at a much lower bit rate on the wire. So uh, there is a compromise to that. There is the cost of 15% additional CPU to that. So, so I wanted to actually gear my, my testing around these claims. And so um, actually, uh, shortly after that, Dialogic released our support for, for VP9. So um, just a little bit of background, Dialogic uh, provides a Power Media XMS, which is a software-based media server. We pride ourselves in being able to do any-to-any -any transcoding. So this fitting into the model of having uh, a codec, uh, being able to transcode that codec to pretty much any other codec that's available. So uh, I wanted to put this to the test, and I wanted to be able to test those claims that were made by, by the PSA. So what I did, uh, I needed a way to test this. And what better way to test this than getting inspiration um, from something provided by Google? And this is something that actually I saw at a WebRTC show. I think it was in San Jose or, or Florida. Um, it was a, it's a demo that pretty much shows VP8 on one side and VP9 on the other side. And yet, on, on the left-hand side of VP8, it's, it's operating at a, a much higher uh, bit rate. So I had my inspiration. Uh, there's, there's, one, there's two problems. One is this isn't using the, the Dialogic Media Server, so I, I couldn't actually test it with, with our product. And two, I, I'm not that good. I, I'm, I'm just a hack, so I couldn't really write something like that. So, so I tried, though. And uh, basically, what I tried to do is, is replicate this, because I, I thought it was really cool the way they did it. And so here's, here's kind of um, the way I did it. So basically, I, I have two clients, uh, first being a VP8 and the second being a VP9. And, and as I said before, this was released on version 48. So uh, I just used my, my Mac laptop here for all the testing. But uh, essentially, I took two clients. Uh, I made two calls, two WebRTC calls into the media server, and I wrote a small script. Basically, the script gave me the ability to do certain things while the video is in there. So transcoding being the top top one, I was able to do conferencing, play files, recording, and doing image overlay. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, I just wanted to be able to do that. Secondly, uh, I, I took them and I meshed them together. So I didn't want to have two different clients going across the different, uh, going separately. So I, I meshed them together and I stitched it together, actually. So as part of that, uh, now you could see it pretty much as they did in, in their video. They're going to be stitched together going at the same time. Now. Uh, I added throttles, and I added throttles on the server side. So adding server-side server throttles to be able to control the bit rate. And then I also, in the throttles, was able to put in some, some uh, latency and some added uh, bit uh, packet loss to it to, in order to cause problems. 
And then last but not least, I, I need a way to measure this. So I actually am pulling analytics straight from the browser side. So the client side is doing all the analytics, the, the server side is doing all the, the throttling, and that's, that's the testing. So this is, this is what I came up with, and this is how it looks afterwards. And so as you can see, it looks pretty much just like the, the Google setup, the, the VP8, the VP9. On the left-hand side, I have the VP8. On the right-hand side, I have the VP9. Obviously, the red line down the middle is the split. The lower part there is, is actually polling uh, the, the WebRTC internals to actually see what the bit rate is being received. So in this case, I have it, uh, I have it throttled to about 1,500 kilobits per second for VP8, and I have it throttled to about uh, 1,000 kilobits per second for VP9. Uh, on the left-hand side there is my, my script toolbox, so as I, as I said before, I could do things like conferencing, recording, and such like that, but uh, this, this, is, this is was what I did to put it, uh, to put VP8 to VP9 to the test. So not too bad for a hack, I guess. And I won't subject you to any more big buck bunny. But I, I know we're, we're in a room full of engineers and developers, so I, I wanted to take a look under the covers to kind of show that there's no magic going behind the scenes. So, First, uh, this, is, this is two calls being made into it. So at the very top, this is a look behind the scenes under the covers of, of the uh, WebRTC internals. So two calls going in, one call VP8, another call VP9. If you take a look at what it looks like from, from the client side, the set local description, I'm actually offering up two, two codecs, a VP9 and a VP8. Um, the max frame size and the, the max frame rate are both 30 frames, 30 frames per second, and also the frame size is, is 3600, which is uh, 720p. So that's, that's the offer side on the client, and then on the, the remote side, I'm actually, I've limited to just VP9. Again, 30 frames per second and, and uh, 3600 uh, 3, frame size. And then if you take a look at actually the statistics that come out of the SSRC, uh, it, is, it is confirming out at VP9 and 720. Uh, so nothing, nothing, no black magic, no secret sauce, no nothing like that. Just really, just having two calls get, coming in and, and meshing them together. So now that was how I did it, and now getting into more of what I was doing. So I really wanted to test VP9 and throttle it down until I really broke it. So I started out at a rate of 1,500, went down to uh, 1,500 and 1,000 uh, with a 30% deviation. So as you said, in the, as I, as you saw in the press release it was at uh, 40%. So I, I wanted to get to that point. So then I, I took it down a notch and I took it to uh, 1,000 kilobits and then 600. So it's a 40% deviation. The low quality, I have it at 800 and 500. And then I, I really wanted to stress it. So I, I really brought it down to a ultra low quality, 500 and 400. So, um, and, then, and then I really wanted to cause some chaos. So what I did was I started introducing packet loss. So, uh, I started at a 0% packet loss, and I ramped it up to 20%. So Chad, Chad threatened me with being on time, so I'm only going to show you a couple of these, so uh, just a, a few of here just to show you what I did here. Um, but there, there's also just one, there's one um, missing piece to this. And, and for, for today, it's the measuring piece. And for today, it's, it's actually, or as, as I wrote it, it's going to be subjective. So I'm going to show you a bunch of videos. I'm going to be do lot, doing lots of hand waving, thumbs up. But the quality assessment is, is subjective right now. And that's, that's something I need to work on for a future consideration. But for, to not, for now, it's, it's very, going to be very subjective as far as the quality goes. All right. So And, and also, I'm, I'm moving away from Big Buck Bunny. Uh, so me, I'll be waving. It's, it's real-time communication, right? So we need, to, we need to make it that way. All right. So here, here I am in my office doing that. And this is the high-quality test. As you can see, uh, 1,500 kilobits on the left-hand side and 1,000 kilobits on the right-hand side. So if you look at it from a left to right perspective, comparing them to, they're pretty similar. They're, they're, I'd say they're pretty similar in that respect. Um, you take, a, take it to a step down to the low quality. Oh, hang on, let me back up for a second. Let me just, so I showed this to our internal team. And the first thing they said was, well, yeah, but on the left-hand side, I can't tell if a red ball is any better than a red ball on the right-hand side. You know, there's, it's not the same. I said, yeah, but they're stitched. They're stitched together. Isn't that cool? But anyway, they said, well, can't you just, you know, separate the video? And I said, all right, fine. So this is, this is the video separated together and not stitched anymore. So you could actually get a pretty good look at uh, what it looks like being totally separate VP8, VP9. I was really, really bored waving, so. All right, so taking it down another notch there, 
this is the low quality, and this is getting more towards, so again, this is just to back up and take a step back, everything has been negotiated as being 720 at a very high quality, a very high resolution. But now here we are lowering that with a throttle. So we're inducing this based on a network throttle, and we're seeing how it reacts to the network. So this is the low quality. The, this is, uh, I believe it was 800 and 500 kilobits per second for VP9. So um, again, this is just purely subjective, but the left to right is, is pretty comparable. But now if you, you start to compare the high quality to the low quality, you can actually see there is a bunch going, there's a lot going on as far as the pixelation goes from, from a high quality to low quality. So it is, it is adapting quite nicely to the network conditions. All right, so now I, I wanted to break this. I, I, wanted to do, I wanted to do this in a way that I wanted to see results. So I wanted to introduce packet loss. And, and here's a picture from the uh, network uh, WebRTC internals for a normal call. And no, no packet loss, no nothing. You can see it's it's pretty calm as far as as far as the the, uh, the lines go. There, you start to you start to wreak havoc on on making packet loss. And I, I, as I said, I went from zero to twenty, and then I ramped it down zero to twenty, ramped it down. And you can see at the lower bottom there, the the blue line is is the retransmission rate. So I'm actually causing problems in the network. And here's what it looks like after that point. So I tried to go as slow as possible to see the quality. You can see it's, it is pixelated and is moving, but it's reacting quite nicely to, to, my, to the packet loss. It's, it's actually pretty good. So I, I wasn't able to break it. So that's, that's kind of the, the backup to that. But getting more into what's behind the scenes as far as the, um, the claims of it actually performing at a better quality, but at a, at a compromise of the CPU consumption. So this is this is in all fairness, this is taken from the server side, and it's it's at VGA quality. But you can see there's there's a couple different sampling sizes. There's a couple different data points here. There's the frame size. There's the frame rate. There's the uh, the bit rate, and then there's the processing time that it takes for us to do this. Um, that was the VP8 side. This is the VP9 side. And if you start to kind of take the averages and bring them together, you could actually see that the frame rate is essentially the same. The bit rate for VP8, it's, it's a little bigger for, for VP8. Um, can't really have control over the decoder side, so that's, that's, it is what it is. And then you actually look at um, the processing time it takes for us to handle those packets. It's about 30% 30, 30 more uh, to decode it for us. You reverse it and you look at the encoding side. And again, the, you, you take the VP8 and you compare it to the VP9. You take a look at uh, the frame rate, exactly the same. If you look at the, the uh, bit rate, it's, it's actually less on the, on the VP8 side because we can control this a little bit more. And then you actually look at the processing time it takes for, for that. So what we're finding is it actually is a little bit more to decode and encode um, than, than the claim. But there's also that, that kind of star, that caveat there. There's trade-off modes. And, and Chris had mentioned the, the trade-off triangle. I don't, I don't really have a cool name to give it, but there are trade-off modes. There's trade-off modes between the speed and the compression efficiency. So what we did is we tried to select an efficient, we tried to select a mode for both VP8 and VP9 for real-time communication. So this is kind of in the middle, uh, compromising the speed and compression for, for communications. And then, and then there's surprises along the way. And this is, this is a generic slide. I, it's actually, it's, it's ripped off from Wiki. So there's nothing really important here to, except for um, the, the, the idea of, of iframes and p-frames. So typical codecs, like the VP8, H.264, and everything kind of prior to that, all other codecs, if something were to happen during the stream, uh, including VP8, renegotiations happen at iframes. And this is important because in iframes, they come less often. They're bigger, they're harder to, to process, but they come less often. They may come at 10 seconds, a minute, 10 minutes. They're just not constant. VP9 changed that. So VP9 actually, you can receive a, a renegotiation at iframes or p-frames. So what, what exactly does that mean? So for us, we have to be ready for a renegotiation at all times. But for a user, that actually means that quality can, can change and adapt a lot quicker, because p-frames are constant. They're always coming, they're always coming at you, and they're always being handled. So if at any time a quality, is a quality improvement or a, a, a bit rate improvement is detected, or, or if it's actually going down, VP9 can actually adapt to those changes a lot quicker than any other codec. 
All right, so I'm out of time, and Chad's going to sweep me off here. But just to kind of conclude this here and, and bring it to, uh, to some, some summaries here, I mean, VP9 is a, a pretty badass codec. But then again, so is VP8. Um, so in my testing, I found that both are pretty resilient as far as uh, the varying bit rates go. Uh, both are pretty resilient as far as the packet loss go. No doubt, VP9 outperforms VP8 as far as bits on the wire. It's, it's, it was without a question in that sense. Um, and then processing, uh, I know the, that based on our results and based on what we did, the VP9 consumes 30%. I'm sure there's trade-offs to get that lower and there's, there's, um, there's efficiencies we can make, but at what we found is, is definitely at 30%. Uh, future considerations, I said it, I, I don't want to hand wave anymore, so what we really need to do is, is implement some type of qu uh, QOE, uh, quality of, of experience, so being able to actually put a number to it and actually measure this uh, objectively rather than subjectively. Uh, and then also measuring the VP9 versus other codecs. So uh, H.264, H.265, uh, that would be a nice little test to do. And then lastly, you can't really see it there, but uh, measuring this against uh, mo on mobile. So this is all browser-based, but measuring this in, in more of a mobile sense. That is all my time. Uh, I do plan on probably putting this up eventually on GitHub, so if you're interested, I'll, uh, I'll share it with you guys. But, and if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out.